Hi, my name is Bert, and welcome to the Backyard Safety Training Program. Inflatable amusement rides can be a fantastic party solution that will create wonderful memories that will last a lifetime. To help your party become as successful as possible, we have created this safety training video to promote safety awareness when operating a backyard inflatable, such as jump houses, moonwalks, combination units, all of the above. The first step in renting your inflatable is to take a walk through your intended area to make sure there is a clear and open space large enough for your inflatable. Plan to place your inflatable on a hard flat surface away from your house's utility meters and pools. Be aware of the size of the inflatable you are renting. Some manufacturers recommend at least 3 to 10 feet of clearance all around the unit. Be sure there is overhead clearance too. Many traditional inflatables are 16 feet tall and require a minimum clearance of 19 feet. This space will be larger than the dimensions of the inflatable, and it is important to know that you have the ground space and height clearance required. Paying particular attention to power and utility lines, which should be at least 20 feet away from your inflatable. Speaking of electricity, make sure there's a power source nearby. Inflatables may only have a maximum of a 100-foot extension cord attached to them. So when you are selecting your site, you want to make sure that the cord can reach the power source without becoming a tripping hazard for your guests. Turn off all sprinklers. This includes underground sprinklers. Be sure to know where underground gas, plumbing, or water lines are on your property. If there are sprinklers or underground pipes where you'd like to place your inflatable, make sure to let your rental company know so that they can use weights to anchor down your inflatable rather than stakes. The area you select must be clear of all sticks, twigs, branches, toys, and animal-related items. Pet droppings will damage the inflatable, so make sure you remove them from your intended area before you set up your inflatable. Make sure there's plenty of room for the children to safely enter and exit the inflatable. Also make sure that there's no tripping hazards, trees, sharp objects around the inflatable so that the children can exit safely. After you are satisfied with the placements, bring the inflatable to the tarp and begin to unroll. After the inflatable is unrolled, unfold the inflatable. Make sure that it is fully laid out so that the entrance and the blowers are in the intended spots and that it is centered on the tarp. Also make sure all of the anchor points are accessible. Fasten all nylon straps and tethers on all anchor points to your anchoring devices and make sure that they are all attached properly. Check for air tubes and vents, closing all of the vents except the one that will be attached to the blower. If an extension cord is needed for the blower, only one cord may be used and it may not exceed 100 feet in length. Connect the blower to the GFCI and ensure that they are both working properly. The unit inflates with a flip of the switch on the blower. Observe the inflation process so that you can turn off the blower if needed. Once the unit is fully inflated, take a moment to walk around the inflatable to double check all of the air vents are closed and anchor points are fastened properly. Do a careful walk around and inspect the setup. The anchoring straps attached to the inflatable should be tight, but still allow for room for the inflatable to move. Otherwise, these anchor points can tear as the inflatable naturally shifts when the children jump. Inflatables are engineered to be safe when children's weight is distributed throughout the entire jumping surface area. Know your inflatable's weight restrictions. Be very careful not to exceed this weight. Safety is based on this weight distribution. Teenagers and adults above 200 pounds are too big to bounce on many of the inflatables since teen and adult weight cannot be distributed correctly. Be sure to check with your inflatable company to make sure that your unit is designed to support the height and weight of your intended guests. Each inflatable has a sign on the unit which details the limitations for that particular unit. Read and follow these instructions. Sidewalls are not constructed to support children bouncing off of the walls. 
They are designed to keep children safely inside. Make sure no one bounces off or climbs on the walls. The netting is designed to keep the inflatable well ventilated and keep the children visible at all times. It is not designed for children to climb on. Children inside the inflatable should be close in age, weight, and size. There should be no more than one head difference between the tallest and shortest child inside the inflatable. Make sure to divide children into groups based on their size and physical ability. The specific height restrictions vary on the individual inflatable. Be sure to check with your rental company about the minimum height for your specific inflatable. It is very important to make sure you do not exceed the maximum passenger capacity for your particular unit. Another important piece of information to keep in mind is that inflatables are designed for jumping inside the unit, no flipping inside, and no hanging on the exterior decorations. Inflatables are also never to be used as a rescue device or to jump onto from any other device or platform. First and most important rule in inflatable safety is supervision. Adult supervision must be kept at all times. Hi, I'm Beth and I have my master's in elementary and special education. As a certified teacher, I think it's very important to make sure you establish the rules and make sure the children are clear on the rules before going into the jump house. They're located on the front of the jump house. One of the main things that you need to do is make sure the children are separated by height. You can't have children in that are more than one head height's difference. Because if you have a bigger kid jumping with a smaller kid, then you're going to have knees going into faces, and that's not good. Or you don't want a big kid falling on a little kid, that would hurt as well. So that's one of the main things to do. Also, you need to make sure that there are no flips, and when you go down the slide, that it's feet first. Before the children use the inflatable for the first time, gather them all around and explain the safety rules especially the part about sitting down when you tell them and to safely exit the inflatable. Explain to them that in the event of an emergency, everyone will get out safely, even though it may be scary. First, no drinks or food in the inflatable, so can you please put them outside? And if you have any kind of glasses on, you need to take your glasses off as well. And if you happen to have sharp objects on you, that's not safe in the inflatable, so please take those, put those away as well. When you're coming inside the jump house, make sure you have your shoes off, you leave your socks on. It's not like a trampoline, so it's not easy to flip, and if you do flip, you might bump into someone, so it's not safe, we don't want to be doing that. Also, no wrestling, no diving, anything like that. You need to make sure your friends have room to jump, so make sure you give them some space. When you're climbing up the step, climb up one at a time. Go inside the entrance, and you can jump. Make sure when you're jumping that you avoid the entrance inside. Okay. You want to jump in the center of the jump house. If you jump through the entrance, you might fall out when you're jumping past there. Okay, so stay in the center. Over here, when you're coming down the slide, feet first down the slide, not head first. And also, you come down the slide, you don't ever crawl back up the slide. Sit down and then slide through. You don't want to come out head first. We always want to come out feet first. The netted windows can be a problem if children are permitted to hold the netting while jumping. Be sure children are not holding the netting or leaning on the side walls. It is possible for children's fingers and teeth to get caught in the netting, and this may cause injury. Safety exits for traditional bounce houses are usually either a completely removable roof by Velcro or clips located in the corners, or the safety exit can be a patch on the roof that can be detached. In slides, obstacles, and combination units, there may be large portions of the inflatable that are uncovered and can serve as an emergency exit. However, they may also have removable patches as well, if there are large covered sections. Some inflatables may require additional supervisors. Again, the nets are not designed for children to play against. And you should be careful of children holding hands while jumping, since if their jumps become less synchronized, they may pull one on top of the other and collide. Make sure that all the children are engaged in similar activities. If some are jumping, everyone should be jumping. If they all decide to sit down, they all need to be sitting or crawling around. You don't want to have some children sitting while others may accidentally jump on top of them. When using the slides, make sure that the children climb up the ladders one at a time and slide down the slide, feet first and one at a time.
Just remember to keep all silly string and similar products away from the inflatable. Silly string and those types of toys will cause damage to the fabric, so they are prohibited around the inflatable. I seem to notice that some of the younger children weren't allowed inside the inflatable. It, was there a specific reason why certain children aren't allowed inside a particular inflatable? Each unit is designed for different ages because of the elements inside of the inflatable. You have to check with your individual manufacturer or the rental company to make sure that the unit can fit the children that are going to be inside that inflatable. So in terms of parents, I got a lot of kids that are coming to the party and uh, I want to make sure that uh, they get to go and see their kids playing inside. Uh, is that okay if they get up there, you know, right up next to the inflatable? You want to make sure the parents have a nice safe distance away from the inflatable. Because the kids inside, they don't want to grab, you're not allowed to have the kids grab the nets. And as the parents approach from the side, or any spectators approach from the side, it usually attracts the kids to also go up on the nets and say hi to the parents. So it's best to encourage the parents to watch from a safe distance away as not to encourage the kids to get close to the nets. Children with casts, braces of any kind, or open wounds should not use the inflatable because as they jump, they may injure others or their cast may damage the inflatable. Pregnant women should not use the inflatable. Now I, not I noticed that uh, one of the um, inflatables started to uh, deflate um, and because uh, there was a bit of a power outage. Um, but uh, how do you guys handle that? Power outages happen occasionally during parties. It's nothing to panic about. The first thing you need to keep in mind is to keep the parents and the children that are inside the inflatable calm. Generally, if you can keep the kids calm, you're going to eliminate a lot of the potential accidents that happen. Mo all of the inflatables that we carry, and I believe most of the inflatables across the country, have safety exits on the roof. The first step to do is when it deflates, have all of the children sit down and exit through the, the regular exit. If they can't get out through the exit, then you have them remain seated and then get them out through the roof exit through either those clips on the corners or through this exit slit, which is generally made out of Velcro. Just reassure the kids that it's, they're safe. Jump houses are generally have netted windows. Even the vinyl, it's not going to suffocate the children inside there. The first sign there is a problem will probably be the change in sound. You may have a sudden drop in sound as the blower turns off. The moonwalk operator should stand close enough to the inflatable to notice the change in sound, or a drop in pressure will be able to tell your participants to exit the inflatable. As soon as you recognize the sound has stopped or the inflatable is beginning to lose air, have all of the children sit down, and then in an orderly fashion, have the children exit quickly but orderly through the door. If the unit has deflated to the point where the entrance or exit is blocked, tell the participants to remain calm while they wait for the inflatable to deflate and escape through the emergency exit. As the inflatable deflates, the important thing is to not panic. Tell the children that they are safe and to just sit down and have them exit. You also want to keep the other parents calm so they do not cause the children to injure each other in a panicked attempt to escape. Just keep everyone calm and you should have no problems keeping them safe. Once all of the children are outside of the inflatable, then you can assess what the problem was and fix it. But the important thing is to get the children out first and address the problem second. There are a number of reasons why an inflatable may deflate during your party. First, you may have overloaded the circuit or the circuit popped. Second, someone may have tripped over the wire. Another reason could be that someone may have accidentally flipped the switch. To ensure that your inflatable's blower has enough power to operate properly, avoid plugging anything else into the power circuit. And also, try to avoid using a circuit that also powers any large household appliances. 
If the circuit was overloaded and you must reset the circuit breaker, the GFCI will also need to be reset by pressing this button right here. One problem you may find is that the blower strap will fall off of the lip of the blower. If this happens, all you have to do is take the blower strap, refasten it back on to the blower, and then turn back on the blower and let the kids come back inside and play. Inflatables cannot be used and must be deflated if the wind reaches 25 miles per hour or higher. However, some manufacturers even suggest to take down the inflatable if the wind speed reaches 15 miles per hour. Readings from a handheld device can help you determine your current wind speed. Inflatables cannot be used to make thunderstorms that must be deflated. Have all children exit the inflatable. Turn off the GFCI and blower and after the unit is deflated, place a mat, bag, carpet, or cover over the blower to prevent it from being damaged in the rain. If there are no other available options for covering the blower, disconnect it and bring it to a safe, dry location during the rain or thunderstorm. Uh, when the rain stops, when it stops, when it stops. Uncover the blower, restart the GFCI, turn on the blower, allow the unit to inflate, send someone in to dry off all the surfaces, have the children remove their socks. Normally socks are recommended, but socks are slippery when wet. Once the moonwalk is dry, children may use the inflatable again. just a couple key points to remember. Remembering to clear the area before you set up the inflatable. Using flat level surfaces to set up your inflatable. Make sure to have your shoes off and your socks on when using the inflatable. Remember there is no jumping on the walls or on the nets. Also remember there are no flips within the inflatable. Make sure that all the children inside the inflatable are all engaging in similar activities, such as jumping or crawling. Make sure the children that are entering the inflatable are separated into groups in which the children are similar in age, weight, and height. There is no food, toys, pets, or silly string allowed inside or around the inflatable. Anyone who is either unwilling or unable to comply with the safety instructions should not be allowed inside the inflatable. Well, that concludes our safety training video. I hope you learned a lot 